Hello guys, MC the Mantra Surgeon here, real life surgeon with a passion for all things Warhammer. And in this video, I'm going to share with you four tips on how to use a magnifying visor. Now I'd say I'm pretty qualified to talk about this topic since in my line of work as a surgeon, I use similar magnification equipment during surgery to work on small objects like arteries and veins. And no Julian, it's still not enough to work on your private parts. Moving swiftly on, if you found out a thing or two in this video that helped you out, maybe drop us a like or even subscribe. So, do these things make you look like a jackass, or does it actually work? Let's find out. In this set of videos, I'll be demonstrating various principles from my Carson's Optical Pro Magnivisor against my usual pair of loops I use for surgery from Surgical Acuity. Now be very much aware that the price of my surgical loops is almost 15 times that of the magnifizers, so I'm only comparing it in terms of the principles of how it holds up for miniature painting, and not using it in terms of how it performs in cardiac surgery. I'll also be saving the savage truth for last and some tips to overcome it, so stay tuned till the end. Tip number one, pick the correct magnification for what you are working on. The most important function of these magnifying visors is to make small details clearer so you can approach and identify the correct areas that you need to work on. Now it's very easy to jump straight to the highest magnification thinking that you'll get the best results, but tip number one is actually to tell you to pick the correct magnification, not the most. For example, if you jump right up to the highest magnification, true you'll be able to see the area of interest crystal clear, but you'll realize that there'll be areas that become blurred and out of focus, especially at the peripherals of your model. At 3.5 times, it can be a significant problem since many of times you're moving your brush away from your field of view, and you may not be able to relocate the brush to your field of vision. Moving to a 2.5 times lens, which is the usual magnification I use at work as well as for miniature painting, you get a much better perception of the model while getting an adequately magnified and clear image of your target area. Now this has the added benefit of getting slightly more of the model into your field of vision. Now being able to see the other colors is actually pretty important to help you see how the different colors are interacting with each other, especially when you're highlighting and glazing. Tip number two, know the focal length on your lenses. Now, even though this may seem trivial, I have learned the hard way that using a pair of magnifying visors with an unsuitable focal length tailored to you is a quick ticket to the chiropractor. Any magnifying optics, your eyes included, have optimal focal length at any given setting that they work best at. In general, a lower magnification usually have optimal focal length slightly farther away. And the reverse is true when using a lens with a higher magnification. So before you buy any set of visors, ask yourself, what is the kind of posture you usually use when you paint? If you're used to painting your models at around 20 to 30 centimeters away from your eyes, the most magnifying visors should be pretty easy to adapt to. Tip number three. Find a visor with good headlight. One advantage that these magnifying visors have over my surgical loops at work is that they usually come with a mounted headlight, unlike me having to wear a separate one at work. Now the headlight that comes with my Carson's Opera Pro magnifier is battery operated and sports a white LED light. Now I myself don't really like using the headset's light and I prefer to just use a good old fashioned daylight lamp on the side. The first thing to know is the color of your headlamp. For example, my magnifying visor sports a white light that can actually distort the color on the model, making it more difficult to work with. A daylight bulb is much better for this purpose. Second thing to consider is whether the lamp is adjustable. Since at different focal lengths as previously mentioned, you'll need the light to be shone at a different angle. So it's up to you if you want a headlight, but for me, I usually just do without. Tip number four, you actually need decent enough technique to actually benefit from them. Right. I told you at the start of the video, I'm going to keep the most blunt and brutal comment I have for these visors for last. Now, I used to think I have pretty stable hands and can do fine motions pretty well during surgery, but everything changes when you put on your magnifying visors. All humans have some form of tremor, it's just whether it's coarse or fine. But just bear in mind that everything now is 2 to 3.5 times worse than what it originally was, so if you don't have the technique to stabilize your hands, then it's just going to be a waste of time and money. But even the most shaky of surgeons have their own ways to steady their hands when they need to. And here is how. When you're painting on highlights or small details like lenses, have both of your arms resting on the table on the area just in front of your elbows. That way you're not balancing on the bone of your elbow but using your forearm muscles as a shock absorber. Use a model holder of some sort to mount your model. And now with your brush hand, use a finger, usually your pinky, to stay in contact with the model holder while you move your brush to where it needs to be. 
This way, your arms, your hands, your brush, and your model now move together as a unit with mechanisms of shock absorption for maximum motion synchronization. And now you are ready to tackle even the smallest details. For more information on how to highlight, check out my highlighting tutorial going up on your screen right now. And that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. If you found out about something that you didn't already know, maybe drop us a like or even subscribe. If you think there's a tip that I missed, go ahead and leave in the comment section below. Maybe I can try it out in my next video. Guys, this is MC the Miniature Surgeon, signing out.